Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. In this video, we will follow the Introducing ArcGIS Pro tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. In this tutorial, you will explore the main components of the ArcGIS Pro user interface, including the ribbon, views, and panes. You can follow the full written instructions for this tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Let's get started. Open ArcGIS Pro and confirm you are signed in to your ArcGIS Online account. If the ArcGIS sign-in window appears, enter your ArcGIS organization username and password and click Sign In. You may want to check Sign In automatically so you don't need to sign in the next time you start the application. Your profile name and ArcGIS organization appear at the top of the ArcGIS Pro window. You can create an open projects on the Home tab, find tutorials and other help information on the Learning Resources tab, and set options for ArcGIS Pro on the Settings tab. On the home page, system templates for creating projects are displayed. These allow you to open a project containing a map, catalog view, global scene, or local scene. You can also start without a template to open a blank project. Below the system templates, you can open a recent project. We will click Open Another Project to locate a project package that is available in ArcGIS Online. Make sure the portal is set to ArcGIS Online and search for Introducing ArcGIS Pro v340. Make sure it has the authoritative badge. The project opens to a zoning map of Wellington, New Zealand. At the top of the application is the Quick Access Toolbar. This is where you can save your project and undo or redo actions. Below the Quick Access Toolbar is the Ribbon, which consists of a series of tabs. Each tab, such as the Map tab, has its own set of commands. This project has a number of views open. A view can display a map, layout, table, chart, or another item. This project currently has two map views, a local scene view, and a layout view open. The Contents pane shows the contents of the active view, and the Catalog pane provides access to data and other items used in the project. If you accidentally close the Contents or Catalog panes, you can reopen them on the View tab by clicking Reset Panes for Mapping Default, or by clicking Catalog Pane or Contents to open just one of the panes. Click the View tab of the Central Wellington map to make it active. The map shows buildings in the city center symbolized by their solar energy potential. Dark orange buildings receive the most sunlight, and yellow buildings receive the least. Click the View tab of the Central Wellington 3D local scene to make it active. This is a local scene that shows the buildings in 3D. Click the View tab of the Wellington Solar Energy Potential layout. The layout is based on the Central Wellington map. When a layout view is active, the Contents pane displays the layout page elements, such as map frames, legends, scale bars, and text. The Map tab on the ribbon is replaced by the Layout tab. Make the Wellington City map view active again. Click the Close button on its View tab. The map view closes, but it isn't deleted from the project. To open it again, go to the Catalog pane and expand the map's container. You can right-click the Wellington City map and click Open to work with it again. On the Map tab in the Navigate group, the Explore tool is selected by default. The Explore tool is a split tool. Clicking the top half performs an action, which in this case is getting information about map features. Clicking the bottom half opens a drop-down list of choices that adjusts the tool's behavior. When the Explore tool is selected, you can navigate the map by panning and zooming. Hover over the Wellington City map. Notice that the mouse pointer changes to a hand. You can click and drag the map to pan it. If you pan too far away and can no longer see your study area, you can use bookmarks to return to your starting place. On the Map tab in the Navigate group, click Bookmarks. Under Wellington City Bookmarks, click Wellington to return the map to its original extent. Click Fixed Zoom In a few times to zoom in to a larger scale and see more detail. You can use Fixed Zoom Out to zoom back out. As you zoom, notice that the map scale changes in the scale box at the bottom of the view. Click the Map Scale Box drop-down arrow and change the scale to 1 to 24,000. You can also zoom to see the entire extent of a layer. In the Contents pane, right-click the City Boundary layer and click Zoom to Layer to see the entire city boundary. On the map, click anywhere inside the city boundary to open the pop-up pane. 
The pop-up pane contains information on the zoning layer's attributes in the location you clicked. This is because the zoning layer is located at the top of the drawing order. By default, the Explore tool opens pop-ups for the topmost layer. Click Close on the pop-up. The information that appears in pop-ups for features in the zoning layer is stored in an attribute table. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence between features on the map and records in the table. In the Contents pane, click the zoning layer to select it. On the ribbon, three tabs are outlined in white. These are contextual tabs which appear when ArcGIS Pro is in a state to make use of them. For example, when a feature layer is selected in the Contents pane of a map, as it is now, the Feature Layer, Labeling, and Data tabs appear and contain commands for working with feature layers. On the ribbon, click the Data Contextual tab and in the Table group, click Attribute Table. The Layers Attribute Table opens in a view. Each row in the table corresponds to a feature in the layer. Each column is an attribute, or category of information. For example, the table has two zoning attributes, District Plan Zone and Generalized Zone. By default, the table view is docked below the map, which may partially block your view of the map. You can drag the table view by its view tab away from its docked position. As you drag the view over the application window, its position is represented by a semi-transparent blue rectangle. If you hover over the map, docking targets appear. Drag the table view to a location that is not on a docking target and release the mouse button to float the view over the application window. You can move and resize the table to fit your needs. In the table, click the gray square numbered 1 at the edge of the table to select the first row. The row is highlighted in the table and its corresponding feature, which is part of Wellington International Airport, is selected and highlighted on the map in the southeastern part of the city. Hold the Shift key. In the table, click the gray square numbered 5 to select the first five rows both in the table and on the map. Suppose you want to see all the areas that have a certain zoning designation, such as conservation. You could scroll through the table and select them manually, but there is a better way. On the Map tab, click Select by Attributes to open the Select by Attributes window. Let's create a query to select the conservation features on the map. The Input Rows parameter is correctly set to Zoning, and the Selection Type parameter is set to New Selection. In the Expression Builder, Click the Where drop-down arrow and select Generalized Zone. The logical operator is correctly set to Is Equal To. We want to set the Generalized Zone value to Conservation. Click OK and notice that 48 of the 2,289 records are selected in the table and the corresponding features are selected in the map. In the table, click Show Selected Records to only show the 48 selected records, and click Show All Records to show all records again. On the Map tab in the Selection group, you can clear the selection to deselect the records from the map and from the table. Go ahead and close the table. We can change the symbols that represent features in a layer and change the base map that provides background context for the layers. Click the View tab for the Central Wellington map to make the map active. On the Map tab, click Base Map. A drop-down gallery of base maps appears. Click Firefly Imagery Hybrid to update the base map. In the Contents pane, there are two layers associated with this base map, the World Imagery Firefly layer at the bottom of the list of layers, and the Hybrid Reference layer, which contains place name labels at the top. In the Contents pane, click the Parks layer to select it. On the Feature Layer tab, click Symbology to open the Symbology pane. Click the green symbol to make changes to the layer's symbology. At the top of the pane, there is a Gallery tab and a Properties tab. On the Gallery tab, you can choose a predefined symbol from the styles, such as ArcGIS 2D, that are added to the project. On the Properties tab, you can modify symbol properties, such as color and outline width. On the Gallery tab, search for Park to see symbols that are typically used to denote parks. You can choose whichever park symbol you prefer. Let's explore how to navigate around a 3D scene. Click the Central Wellington 3D Scene view to make the scene active. On the Map tab, open Bookmarks, and under Central Wellington 3D Bookmarks, click your voice key. Back in the Bookmarks, click View from Lambton Harbor to view the scene from another perspective. Drag the scene to pan in any direction. 
Similar to the map view, on the map tab, you can click fixed zoom in and fixed zoom out. You can also use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. There is an on-screen navigator which can be particularly helpful if you are not using an external mouse. Hover over the navigator and click Show Full Control. Drag the central sphere to look around in all directions from a stationary point of view. Drag the inner ring up and down to tilt the scene, and left or right to rotate the scene. If you get disoriented, you can always return to one of the central Wellington 3D bookmarks. Click the Show Heading button to restore the navigator to its default appearance. The last thing we'll do is make changes to a layout legend. Click the Wellington Solar Energy Potential Layout to make the layout view active. A layout includes one or more map frames representing maps or scenes in your project, map surrounds such as legends, scale bars, and north arrows, text, and sometimes pictures or graphic elements. This layout has two map frames. The main map is the central Wellington map, and the circular inset map is the Wellington City outline map. Earlier in the tutorial, you saw this map in the list of maps in the catalog pane, but you did not open it. Note that the central Wellington map in the layout displays the imagery base map you applied to the map view. The contents pane lists the layout elements, the map frames, the legend, the text elements, and so on. By default, the elements are listed in their top to bottom drawing order, but we can use the graphic tabs at the top of the contents pane to organize them in different ways. Click List by Element Type to group the layout items by elements such as legends, map frames, and text. Click List by Map Frame and expand the two map frames. Here we can see the layers in each map and the map surrounds associated with each map frame. Click List by Drawing Order to return to the default grouping. Let's add a border to the legend to help it stand out on the layout. Right-click Legend and open its properties. The element pane appears with properties and settings for the legend. At the top of the pane, on the Legend tab, click the drop-down arrow and select Border. On the Symbol tab, click the Color drop-down arrow and set it to gray 40%. Increase the line width to two points and apply the changes. At the top of the pane, click the Layers tab. Expand Offset Effect, increase the offset to five points, and click Apply. Notice that the symbol for parks is listed above the symbols for buildings. Since the layout's purpose is to convey information about the solar potential of the buildings, it would be better if the building symbol appeared first. In the contents pane, expand the legend element if necessary, and drag the building's legend item above parks. Click the layout name at the top of the drawing order to deselect the legend. For more detailed steps, follow the full written tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation, linked in the description for this video.